some of them are heading towards our base. We're gonna just send out our M7 mech. One thing to note is it does have this, holy Jesus. So in episode one, we'll call it, cause yeah, we did start over. We were able to pick up this M7 mech and this thing just carries us for the next like 50 days. Since the M7 is so beastly, halfway through the episode, I decided to add in the Void faction. This faction's incredibly imbalanced. The Void members are very overpowered. And not only are there Void faction raids, there's also Void faction events. And we do end up getting, I'm not gonna spoil whether it's an event or a raid. Do keep in mind, we did add the Void faction in. I think it was around like the 20 minute mark. So yeah, there's that. And a lot of this episode is just surviving and trying to get a lot of tech researched as we're using the random research mod so if we don't randomly research the text that we need then we're just kind of stuck here grinding away so our star base is not in the best location we're kind of running out of space and yeah we could tunnel into the mountain but there is a better place to the north where there's a steam geyser here there's a chem fuel pond which actually has quite a bit of chem fuel in it and then there's another steam geyser up here it'd be pretty easy to wall this stuff off and so to start this episode we're gonna have our new m7 mech actually destroy this ship part first and we're gonna have the m7 mech haul all that stuff basically all the m7 mech can do really is haul which it can do that indefinitely because i talked about in the last episode how it does not have a battery and we can't repair it via the normal means and i was going to contact one of the mod creators about this but yeah i wasn't sure who to contact because i'm not sure if it's caused by rim deed or if it's caused by the android tears mod or maybe it's caused by rim threat i'm not really sure but b i don't really see it being that much of a problem because though we can't repair it at the end of the last episode i talked about how technobot can repair it with his techno bits so it is repairable and though it doesn't have a battery meter which is kind of op it can't be repaired the normal way so it's kind of like a trade-off there it's massive shotgun which is a bc weapon by the way i did a little mini montage at the end of the last episode kind of showcasing the weapon it requires a lot of space or ammo it consumes six rounds per shot and it only has 18 rounds left and so i think one of the things we're going to do to start this episode is we're going to call in an imperial trader because these guys do have space or ammo now it is pretty expensive 262 a pop every time this thing shoots we're basically shooting out liquid money we will buy as much ammo as we can, and we're gonna sell off some of these architect fragments and a good amount of this industrial ammo. It's pretty easy to come by because raiders will drop it pretty often. Much easier to come by than spacer ammo. But yeah, the reason why we're selling this ammo is I wanna make sure we have at least 500 silver so that we can call in another trader in the future. And yeah, our mech is now gonna have plenty of ammo, at least for maybe like one or two raids. Nah, this should last us longer than that, especially if we have other people helping out. With that though, I think we'll begin the process of packing up our stuff and moving to the other base. Like we'll have the M7 mech grab the steel, and I just realized this thing can carry two 2,000 kg worth of stuff so it can actually probably just carry everything and yeah this thing may seem a bit OP but I do like its market value it has a base value of 18k which is how much we bought it for basically a little bit more than that I'm not sure why the character quality is so low though it says the quality is only 50% which is odd considering it only has a small coolant loss and then a really tiny injury to the head like this should not be affecting its market value I don't know why the character quality is only 50% maybe it has something to do with the fact that it has no battery and it's some kind of glitch or something oh and also as I'm editing this, I noticed the carrying capacity says it's supposed to be 390, but with the mod I'm using, it multiplies the carrying capacity times the body size. And the math on that actually checks out. 390 times 5.2 is 2028. My intention is not to use the mod to make this thing OP, but I feel like it's required for other carrying capacities. Like there's certain traits that will increase your carrying capacity, but the game will not. So you kind of need the mod and having something that has this massive of a carrying capacity is more of just like a quality of life thing than anything. It's not going to carry you through a raid or anything. So I'm pretty okay with it. We brought all that stuff over to our new base area but I haven't started building yet I want to build in the mountain and wait did we just find it oh we finally found it okay so I was actually just about to talk about this perfect timing like this okay you guys are gonna think this is scripted I was just about to talk about how there's around six ancient tomes in each map and the thing about ancient tomes is well not only do they have a bunch of nice stuff inside them they're also completely floored in like our living room over here our old living room is actually one below very impressive I think yeah for some reason it dropped below the 85 threshold oh we have some power conduits in here maybe that's why they're lowering the beauty quite a bit actually either way we'll have DSP and wing sleep here probably one one more night and during the night we're gonna have technobot open up this ancient tome and inside there is quite a few mechs technobot is actually heading inside i'm not sure why so these mechs do not appear to be hostile and we're gonna have the m7 try to do a spray and hit the caskets okay never mind for some reason i didn't have line of sight on any of these caskets yeah right here i still don't have line of sight oh wait we have line of sight on that one there we go perfect and yeah all these guys are hostile 
Okay, one of these guys has an EMP, by the way. Oh, that person's dead. Never mind. No more EMP for them. One of them is a caster, also a gladiator. They do have a permanent crack on their spine, but it wouldn't be bad to use like the psychic pacifier on them to make them join us. But I kind of want to save that for a mech. The reason we'd use it on them to make them join us is because we could sell them off for quite a bit of silver. I really hope Sandra doesn't get killed here. So we could. Oh, she's dead. And they're all dead. This Lancer's charge lance is out of ammo. This one's got seven rounds left. This pikeman has eight rounds left. I'm not sure exactly how we want to play this because if the M7 gets damaged too badly. Freaking A, that's loud. Oh, okay. The Scyther's starting to melee the M7. Oh man, it just tanked four shotgun rounds. The M7 being such a giant massive mech is also really going to melee. It has 104% armor pen with 20 melee DPS. That's really high. I'm not sure if it's going to be able to hit that often when it does hit. Okay, it just one shot that thing. I mean, it was already really injured because we hit it with a shotgun, but yeah. Maybe that's the play because we don't have to use ammo. Oh, there's some collapsed rocks here. I was noticing like we couldn't go to here because there's no path. Some rocks collapsed. I'm not really sure why that happened, but yeah, we're going to have the M7 just go in there a little bit and just kind of do a little tickle action. A little Technobot coming here with his assault rifle. Yeah, he got hit, but he repaired it up instantly. Oh yeah, we killed the pikeman and it's just a scyther left. We're going to get a good amount of cash off of this tome anyway, so I don't really care about using that spacer ammo and yep. That's it for the tome. Now we got to get the cleanup crew in here, the M7 mech mainly. I'm just going to start picking up all these bodies. I'm pretty sure I can carry literally all the bodies, maybe even all like the steel as well. And yeah, I was easily able to pick everything up. It's still got half its carrying capacity. Okay, so this is not good. To the southwest corner of our map, we had a mech cluster drop in. And what's really odd about this mech cluster is the mortar is ready to fire very soon. Like any second, actually, it's going to start firing at us. And our goal now is to grab everything here of value that's on the ground. The auto mortar has got, I think, like two shots off. I didn't even see where it shot, though. I think it might be shooting at our old base or maybe it's shooting at Foley, who is in Sad Wander. And I hope that actually, I don't think it's going to hit him. Meanwhile, up here, oh, Technobot's actually getting hit by these camels. So we got a mad camel event at the worst timing. We're going to turn on his... Okay, we'll just have the M7 just blast, I guess. And he's missing the Technobot, which is good. Maybe stop shooting and maybe come over here and just melee. We're actually okay right now. Like, I thought, okay, the M7 just one-shot that thing. And we knocked that one out too. But yeah, as you can see over here, the auto mortar is not dormant, but all these mechs are. I've never actually seen that before. Where the auto mortar will just start shooting at you, but everything else is dormant. That being said, though, it will get one more shot off. We'll just let it get its shot off because we're waiting for Technobot to get over here. And we'll see where that goes. It's going for our old base, so we don't really care where it hits. I think the ideal play here is we just start meleeing this pikeman. That will wake all the mechs up. We'll start meleeing this pikeman too. It's gonna get a shot off, maybe? Maybe not? No, it didn't. Oh, M7 got hit by the turret. I think we'll send it in to just start meleeing the turret. Oh, that could be bad. It's gonna do a lot of damage. Can't get out. Oh, it actually didn't really do any damage, I don't think. And meanwhile, over here, this Lancer should be able to get out. I don't know. Maybe it's gonna continuing to beat on the wall. We're gonna have the M7 get in here and start mailing it. No need to waste ammo on it. Two shot it, very nice. And let's start mailing this mortar. Not with everyone though. Maybe Technobot, keep, stay back. Let's have, okay, that's actually not that bad. The auto mortar did a little bit of explosion damage to the arm and then the leg of the M7, but it wasn't that bad. But yeah, we'll destroy these mech assemblers as well. And we got two components from that one, very nice. And the mech cluster has been defeated. Crisis averted. And we got some free materials, so that's really nice. There's also these gloom lights that we could use as just a steady supply of light, but they give negative 20 beauty for some reason. I wish they didn't do that because they would be a cool thing to have around the base. I think they should actually give beauty because they're not easy to get. You have to get them from mech clusters. And oh yeah, we got a shield core from that shield generator we just deconstructed. And okay, shortly after that series of events, which happened around day 15 where we got the mad camels and then the met cluster that was on day about 15.8 on day 16.5 we're getting raided by three sets of tribals so this is the smallest group we're just gonna let the m7 melee this thing down pretty sure okay one shot it borba is actually gonna bleed out in four hours maybe we just let her bleed out cut her around till she gets 
too much blood loss and then we can sell her off maybe even though we are getting raided from tribals from three sides this raid is still fairly small because tribals just aren't worth that many points because their gear is just not that good so usually they'll send just massive hordes of tribals at you but this is a sapper raid and sapper raids tend to be a lot smaller because they tunnel into your base one of their dudes actually has a really high market value i think it's this dude pelican yeah it's this guy he's actually really solid he's got four really good traits quick sleeper increases rest iron will lowers his mental break he's a paladin so we can't recruit him unfortunately and he's not a robot anyways but he also has vulcan's fire which i need to change around this trait because i already have a trait that increases global work speed by 100 percent i'm thinking what i want to do with this trait is just double it so construction speed is increased by 200 percent just so it has kind of a niche because yeah vulcan is the god of fire metalworking and the forge basically regardless it doesn't really matter we're not having the guy join us and i'm just going to make sure that i had wings use the psychic pacifier on the right targets yeah we're aiming on the right guy and we're going to recruit him to our faction momentarily. Maybe we'll actually wait for our dudes to get a little bit closer. Because I don't want them to instantly start owning Pelican and injure him badly. Because then we'll have to wait quite a while for him to heal up. So we can sell him off. Yeah, we'll let these guys get a little bit closer. Technobot is coming too. But he's pretty far away. Oh, we just one shot that guy. And that person's dead too. Here comes Langa, who is a caster. Langa's actually really good too. Surprisingly, actually has a market value of almost the same as the other guy. I think Boundless actually increases market value too. Boundless combined with Psionic is actually really good because Psionic's a melee class. I think they work really well together. I've never actually tried a Psionic person though. But yeah, I think now would be a good time to use the Psychic Pacifier on Pelican. And we recruit him. Did he get any? No, nice, he didn't get any brain damage. So that's really good. We're gonna have him use his shield ability. And nice, he actually blocked that attack. We don't want him to get hurt at all because we want to sell him off for full price. And nice, that guy's dead. We would actually really like to not have this guy die. We hit him three times, he's gonna bleed out in eight hours. Do we follow him? Maybe we'll just tag him again. Try to tag him, ah, uh, we killed him. That's unfortunate. But yeah, so the aftermath of that whole thing is we did pick up Pelican, who we will unfortunately sell off for quite a nice price though, 3900 for the guy. We do have quite a few things we can sell, and I think I went over Theodore, this tier four android in the last episode. The dude can shoot and do melee. He's an insomniac though, which lowers his global work speed and his movement speed. And I think this is actually a horrible trait for a mech, because it makes it so you don't have to sleep as much, but androids don't have to sleep. So yeah, that guy is horrible. How about Bradford though? Dude overall is kind of weird. He's not really good at anything that we need necessarily and he doesn't really have any passions for combat but yeah after selling the dude off we got quite a few goods that we can sell a lot of human leather we're actually about to get some more too there's a few more human bodies we can butcher up some mechanoid components that we don't need right now we don't have to research for it quite a bit of plasteel and some advanced components i believe a bulk is would by all of that this one actually does have quite a bit of silver we'll sell them all these advanced components these mechanoid components and actually the plain leather and the human leather will buy out all their silver i mean we could call in a combat supplier and try to pick up a decent range weapon we got a mech cluster and it's another auto mortar it's going to initiate in 120 seconds what is with the luck on this run man well i guess it's going to wake up in nine hours anyways so it wouldn't matter too much but it's kind of annoying that it's going to start firing immediately just because we have no time to react and yeah we have to pick up all this trash <laughs> oh, it's annoying. We do have a low shield that we could deploy. If we want to just like drop it right here, that could be a play. And I don't think their turrets could penetrate the shield. I think that's going to be the safest play. Like that's going to be one of the better uses of the shield, I think, that we're going to be presented with. It does have a value of like 300, but we're going to get back more stuff anyways. And yeah, it's just an unlucky mech cluster because we have to destroy this auto mortar. Can't believe we got two of those in a row. Like it's pretty rare to get an auto mortar, especially this early on. But regardless, we will deploy the low shield and then we'll start unloading on the auto Auto mortar mainly. I'm just gonna blow this thing up. That thing's about to blow. Let's aim the centipede now, maybe. Oh yeah, nice. He blew up their other turrets. Yeah, that was perfect. We're not gonna take any damage. And like the thing is, what if we get raided soon? You know, like we don't want to waste Technobot's mana for nothing. We're wasting M7's ammo though. I don't like doing that, but. Yeah, the centipede should go down momentarily. The shield's gonna go down momentarily, and Foley's actually out of ammo. So mistakes were made on that. But yeah, the shield's gonna burn out in two seconds, which is oh, yeah, down. It's not good. Melee the thing, I guess. Ooh. Tectobot's getting lit up. Not that bad though. Like his tough plus his armor is paying off. Foley got hits. 
and we did kill the mech cluster though. So the mech cluster we took out was on day 17. On day 21, we got a infested chunk crash, which is these insects. And then on day 23, we got a raid. And since we opened up these ship chunks, a bunch of insects poured out of them and these raiders will be attacking them because our base is currently walled off. A few of these guys are casters. So if the casters do get knocked out, then that'd be nice. I don't really care too much about it. We're getting a lot of progress done on the base. So I'm just thankful for all this free time that Void's been giving us. But yeah, it looks like the raiders were unsuccessful here. It would be nice to get out here to retrieve their bodies so we could butcher them up for their human leather. And yeah, we're gonna make a move on these insects and we're gonna try to clear the rest of them out. They're pretty wounded anyway, so I don't think we should have much problem doing this. And I really doubt we're gonna have to use any space or ammo because yeah, I'm pretty sure all of them have some pretty bad injuries. And all right, we are getting raided again, this time by a much more sizable raid of tribals. I think I counted four casters, and what I'm thinking is that if we call in an exotic goods trader, and okay, cool, this one actually has a psychic pacifier. The idea I had was we'd buy a psychic pacifier and use it on one of the casters, then we could sell them off. I just don't know if this is gonna be worth, cause yeah, this is 1700, it would be cheaper if DSP had higher social, but yeah, we'll just buy it, and we'll sell this psychic stasis lance. It can put a target into stasis, stopping them from damage and bleeding, but they can't move. These guys also do have an Android assembly kit, the disassembled parts of a tier one Android. The kit holds a set of instructions and tools to assemble the Android with instructions being so clear and straightforward that even an idiot could do it. Should we have someone that has good crafting do that or just DSP since he's out here? It looks like it's gonna take him a while to figure this out. And okay, it looks like this is our tier one Android. He, yeah, pretty much overall sucks. Like he can mine and do research, I guess. One thing I actually didn't realize by the way is apparently with the tier one Android, Androids, the really crappy ones, they have a base global work speed of 55%. I guess that kind of explains why Technobot is really bad at doing stuff. It looks like once they get up to tier 3, then their global work speed starts to be normal. It's 8 right now because I guess he's outside and it's dark. And alright, so here the raiders come. First, before I get into the raiders, I have been doing a bit of work on the base. So we've kind of just been tunneling around looking for other ancient tomes. There should be three or four more on the map somewhere. We're in the process of building a stockpile room here and you may notice the area where we're tunneling is all lighted up. I have a mod that makes it so we can't get infestations around well-litted areas like right here. Well, I guess there's a light right here, but yeah, they have to be really well lit. Like right here definitely could have an infestation spawn. And then up here, we're just tunneling. And yeah, you can see like I've put wall lights everywhere. But yeah, it's kind of what we've been doing with the base. And meanwhile over here, I had some type of defense system in my mind and like this is gonna work okay so we walled this off and since these guys are not sappers they will not attack the walls and they're gonna go for our main choke point area because we have allowed them a way in like i opened up this door so this first guy is actually a caster he's faceless and these casters do have the ability to possess a target i'm not sure if the ai can cast that ability but i really don't want one of our dudes to get possessed we got a commander over here that's gonna buff nearby targets that's okay and then a fire mage which was probably gonna be thrown out aoe but our mechs are pretty much immune to fire I think. So yeah, we're gonna have DSP down here, use his psychic pacifier shooting, and then yeah, let's use, okay, nice, he joined us. But yeah, for the sake of this battle, we will use this guy's abilities, like possess on maybe their fire mage. Well, let's first try to get this guy out of here. We can have him swap places with a target. We could do that with Ryan, our new tier one mech. <laughs> I really don't want this guy to get injured. Like, I don't care if Ryan gets injured. Uh, let's try to transpose him. It's not working. Maybe he has to have line of sight. We'll have him use reversal, which will block all melee and projectile attacks for a small period of time. Hopefully he can get that off. It does take a second to cast. I don't know if he's able to get it off. Let's have him run, I guess. He's able to outrun these guys. Oh, and he actually got reversal off. So maybe it is actually deflecting shots. But yeah, oh, and I think that's their commander that just buffed them. Pretty sure that's a buff ability that was just used. And we have enough stamina to be able to use possess now. Oh, and here we go. Gabella is their fire mage. Let's possess Gabella. And we possess Gabella, and I guess the Faceless is inside of Gabella right now. We can now use her abilities. Let's cast like Fire Claw. I think that's their AoE. We can only use one ability. Just Firebolt. Oh, and then Gabella's out. Okay, that didn't last long. Oh, and Gabella actually got knocked out. Okay, we'll have Odexu capture Gabella. This is actually considered a room, by the way, so we can just bring Gabella over this way. And here comes the rest of these raiders. So yeah, the main thing is that they can't surround us. If they can, then yeah, the M7 could even get taken out pretty quickly. But since they're coming in one by one, okay, Technobot needs to get over here. That whole system's not working. And then Foley actually is out of ammo, but they're running, so it doesn't matter. 
So about two and a half days after that last raid, we are getting sieged and they actually just built the mortars and crap. This is maybe bad for us. Well, actually it's going for our base and it's gonna hit the mountain, I think. Yeah, you saw it just disappear there because anything that's dark green is under the mountain and mortars will not hit it. So that was good. And the main thing now is we need to piss these guys off to make them charge and they actually won't charge us if we play this right. There's an infestation in our old base area. Let's see if we can just get these guys aggroed. Crap, they got another incendiary off. Wait, why are you not shooting? There we go. We just killed a dude. Are they gonna charge? By the way, did that incendiary hit? Yeah, it's hitting the mountain. Okay, cool. We killed two people already. Three dead. Are they gonna charge? Or what's going on? I'm kind of scared because a few of them are casters, and I'm not sure if one of them could use some type of ability on M7 and Linda's down. We have some backup coming in for M7 too. Oh, it's actually not really. Okay, and then they're now attacking us. Yep, that's what I'm worried about. They have casters. We gotta get Foley in here to help out. Crap. M7's taking a lot of damage. Like I can see its HP going down. We just gotta get a few more. Nice, they're running. Oh man, he's getting lit up. But it looks like the elementals are running too, which is good. And yeah, the M7 got banged up pretty good, but we're gonna have Technobot repair it up with the Techno bit, which by the way, we should have a couple level ups. Yeah, we're up to level six. We're gonna put more points in repair protocol just to reduce the mana cost of repairing up nearby people. We're also gonna deconstruct these wooden barricades actually, which is nice. We don't have a lot of wood around the base, which it's not hard to get wood. We could just get it from Bulkid's trader. And yeah, we just got a bunch of stuff that we'll be able to sell to a trader, like these 19 plus 12 package survival meals. So one of the main ways we've been gaining money is selling off human meat and human leather to these bulk goods traders. We actually had a thousand extra here that was not inside of our orbital trade beacon. But yeah, we were getting kind of rich, so we called in a slave ship and they had this tier one android who could shoot. Dude had 10 shooting and he also had six mining. Tier one androids do only have 55% global work speed, but I think it's just worth it to pick up these tier one androids whenever we can and we can just use them as cannon fodder basically. Not long after the whole siege ordeal, I think it was only a few hours later, we get a pack of manhunting cassowaries and I let these things just kind of chill outside of our walls for about two days. And of course, Void was not gonna send us any raid while there was a pack of manhunting animals outside of our walls because that would just be too nice of them and these animals would have taken out the raiders for us. We do end up taking out this pack of manhunting animals before they do end up leaving just because I wanted to be able to skin all of them for some free meat and bird skin. And of course, immediately after we take out all these birds, we do get raided. It was by a fairly small raid though. I'm not sure what's going on with Void in terms of the raid size. I think there's a lot of fluctuation in terms of raid size. Like we got that siege earlier that was kind of hard to deal with. But yeah, we were able to take these guys out pretty easily and I'm just doing voiceover because because that shotgun noise is just way too obnoxious and I think I'm gonna have to change that sound file around. I wanna say it's like triple the volume of most other guns in the game. If you guys remember earlier when we used the psychic pass fire on that faceless caster, the fire mage we used dominate on Gabella ended up getting knocked out. So we were able to sell off the faceless caster and Gabella for a pretty good amount. I think it was like 4K for both of them. I think they were both around like 2K. And then we also let this guy Zox be heal up to full and he only sold off for 350. It wasn't really worth to let him heal up completely. When he was really injured, he was only selling for like 100 but then we had to feed him for quite a while and yeah his trades really suck so they didn't really want him that much to get even more silver we called in a bulk goods trader and we're actually gonna sell him this donkey and this woolly bull we don't really need them anymore for anything in particular and we're also gonna sell him this human meat we got from butchering up the raiders and this bird meat we got from butchering up the cassowaries this trader has some unique meat themselves this architect meat i'm guessing is similar to the architect plants we got earlier it has the same amount of nutrition i'm guessing it doesn't go bad and yeah this stuff is actually gonna be really good to have just on hand it's gonna cost is quite a bit for 234 of it but that's going to be a lot of extra nutrition that we can use mainly just to feed wings and dsp at this point our robots are now able to eat electricity they don't really need food anymore we'll sell them some of this bird skin this human leather and then we actually need steel we're running out of it surprisingly we'll buy 725 steel and then we'll sell this deodicarous shell we killed a deodicarous earlier and it dropped the shell oh and these guys have some extra space ammo we'll buy that and then we'll sell them some random clothing that we had that we're not really using this table that we were not really using these bedrolls plus this gold oh, and immediately after that transaction we got a manhunter pack you may also notice on the right here i called in a bunch of exotic goods traders and the goal was to get a psychic pacifier we didn't find one but a few of the exotic goods traders had some nice upgrade parts and we bought this advanced mechanite storage i think it was around 1700 with the trade price difference before i talk about what we're going to do with this thing i need to figure out how to install it i'm trying to actually install it in the foley and there's no way to administer a CPU nanites bank. But yeah, that's something we spent a good chunk of silver 
we're on. I just noticed we have 400 human leather here, but we have no orbital trade beacon. We have one over here, actually. It just was outside of the radius. So that's why it was not showing up for the bulk goods trader to be able to buy. And yeah, they will buy the human leather and the bird skin for another 1700. So there's nothing in particular that we need right now. And Rimdeed, I'm pretty sure does not have anyone that we can hire. Yeah, they don't have any androids that we can buy. With the rest of our money, I'm gonna gamble it on these slave ships. Or build traders, and we're gonna see if we can get a decent robot slave to hire. And like this Arcotech heat sink could be something that'd be good. Like it gives 200% body part efficiency for the heat sink. I don't really know what that does exactly. They also have this RX neural chip. I'm not sure what that does either. I think we need some research to be able to use that, but yeah. This slave ship does have another tier one android, and the dude can't really fight, is the only thing, but he's a really good cook. 15 cooking. Let's see what the other slave ship's got. So this one has nothing. Green Glow Industries has nothing nothing for us except this evolving ai upgrade actually over time this pond will slowly become more and more mentally complex reaching peak efficiency in all it does it can be installed on any android and i'm wondering if we can remove it at will we will pick it up for the sake of science and we're gonna hope that we can install it and we'll also pick up that cooking bot that has 15 cooking for 700 silver that's gonna be pretty much all of our silver gone though we did just dump a good amount of our silver we're about to get a lot back while we we're doing that whole transaction we got a manhunting pack of dino crocudas and while we we're having technobot thin them out a bit we did end up getting raided even though we'd injured a few of these dino crocudos already the raiders stood no chances these things are beastly i don't think the raiders even killed a single one of these guys and yeah they just went back to our walls and just kind of patrolled around them and this is an intended mechanic of manhunting animals they kind of just don't allow you to leave your base for a little bit what i think is not intended is the ability to shoot out of these embrasures as they're part of a mod so it is kind of op that we're just able to snipe at them and it's kind of dumb they don't react to it at all like you would think they would charge our walls but yeah it was only a matter of time before we injured them all to the point where they were going to bleed out and i did have our new robot chef who has 15 cooking start butchering them but one thing i didn't realize is that these tier one androids are actually really bad at butchering their base butchering efficiency is only 60 percent so even though he's really high cooking it doesn't matter that much he is still good at cooking meals because even though he does it slowly with his really slow global work speed he has a really low chance of food poison so that's nice and he can butcher up human corpses and we don't want wings to do that because he's always on the verge of having a mental breakdown anyways seeing a couple dead human bodies could push him over the edge but but yeah, he's got, I think it was seven cooking, so he was able to get a good amount of meat and leather from butchering up these animals. To the south of our base, in our old base location, there's been this infestation that's kind of gotten out of hand. Originally, I was just allowing this thing to survive because raiders would attack it if we sealed off our base, as they will aggro on the next closest thing that is hostile. But at this point, it's gotten kind of out of control, and these raiders were not really able to do much to it. After those raiders stirred up the hornet's nest, or the bug's nest, I guess you'd say, the bugs started heading towards our base, and they hit our outer walls a few times. And these bugs Bugs do not behave like manhunting animals. Like if you shoot at them through an embrasure, they'll just attack the embrasure. Unless there's a way into the base, so they behave kind of like raiders in that regard. Regardless though, we did just have M7 hold the breach and he took quite a bit of damage, but we were able to repair back up with Technobot. After clearing out a good majority of the bugs, we sent M7 out on a solo mission to retrieve all the insect jelly. And as we were doing that, a couple bugs had spawned, but he was able to just beat them down, taking a bit of damage in the process. While he was out doing that, we got a manhunting pack of penguins, and for some reason they didn't charge him. They just sat outside of our walls, which I am grateful for because I I think this group of penguins, if they surrounded the M7 bot, could have actually taken him out. I don't know if he could have outrun them, because yeah, he was wounded a little bit. But yeah, I've now caught you guys up to speed on all the farming we've been doing. And by the way, let's take a moment to appreciate this foggy sandstorm. I'm pretty sure the sandstorm weather is a part of a desert mod I'm using. And yeah, here's the sandstorm during the day. Oh, and we just got a Njorn chase quest. And the reward for this is actually really good. We get a psychic cornucopia, and we can potentially tame this Njorn. So that might actually be really worth it to do. But yeah, with the sandstorm, if anyone's outside, they get this sandy moodlet. Surprisingly, their global work speed is not slowed. You'd think that'd be the case. Or like maybe their site would be halved or something. I think that'd be pretty cool. But yeah, we got DSP out here ready to do some transactions because we do have a ton of trade goods for sale in our stockpile room. We had the M7 go back for another insect jelly run, and we've got 1,400 insect jelly now. Plus, from those i think it was just two packs of manhunting animals we got what looks like around 6k meat maybe including the stuff that's in our fridge and the meat is all frozen because it's actually been really cold it's three fahrenheit and it has actually been this way for quite a while i didn't realize this but the tile we settled in's average temperature is 39.9 fahrenheit so yeah it's a pretty cold desert i just assume because it's desert it's hot but 
I guess that's not the case here. And while we're on the map, we can see the Najoran hunt is over here to the northwest. I think we will try to go clear that out right now, actually, assuming we can get a psychic pacifier. And there's medieval tournament on the way too, which is a jousting tournament. I believe you have to have high melee in animals, which I don't think we have anyone that has any in animals. So for the next, I want to say like 30 to 40 minutes, I did a bunch of transactions with traders. I called in 33 exotic kids traders and did not find a single psychic animal tamer for that Najorn. Among the things we did find though from these exotic goods traders were two social skill trainers, which we then promptly use on DSP to boost the social from 11 to 17. That increase in social would give us 10% better trade prices on future transactions. And speaking of skill trainers, we did pick up two more crafting skill trainers. The only person I was even considering giving these to was Foley because he does have a minor passion in crafting, which makes him learn it at 90%. Plus being that he's a fast learner increases this by 75%. Being that that was the case, he was going to get really good use out of these crafting skill trainers and we had him actually learn both of them, which did boost his crafting from 7 to 14. Having a crafter is actually pretty important if you want to do anything relating to androids. And at this point, we'd researched the ability to craft basic tier 1 androids. The first one we crafted Elton was decent in animals, but we had no animals on our map and he couldn't do combat, so it was going to be kind of useless to us. We can, however, sell him off to Remedy for 438. And I guess his price actually kind of depends on his skills, like Cook is only going to sell for 330. And I guess that's because he has smoke leaf dependence. He's going through pretty bad withdrawals, and I think that's lowering his trade price. Remedy also just happened to have a tier 3 android. This dude does not seem all that good, though. Theodore, on the other hand, who is a tier 2 android, does have 9 intellectual. And since Foley, our tier 3 android, is now going to be doing crafting full time, we do need someone to do research. I also do want to do a bit of an experiment on this guy. There's this evolving AI upgrade we picked up earlier, and it says we can install it on any android, but I couldn't figure out a way to install it on tier 1 androids. We could install it into Foley, but it requires 12 crafting, and I don't think he could install it into himself. I want to see if we can install it into a tier 2 android, and in order to be able to afford it, we called in a bulkage trader. We're going to sell them this insect meat, all this bear meat, which we got from slaughtering a massive herd of polar bears that invaded us. And actually, before we figure out how much bear meat we're going to sell them, I want to buy all the components that we can. We're going to need components, steel, and plasteel in order to mass produce these androids. I also did not notice this, but we had a thousand bear skin that was inside of our stockpile room that was not next to our orbital trade beacon. So I moved it closer and yeah, we're able to sell it off to this other bulkage trader that we called in. And I did a couple more transactions, sold off some insect jelly, and we do have enough for this tier 2 android. And yeah, we actually can install this upgrade into Theodore, who now has this evolving AI artificial brain that increases consciousness, which is actually going to help his research ability. I would have really liked to give fully more manipulation because that would allow him to create these tier 1 androids quicker. And we're going to try to create an army of them to combat Void. He is already creating them really fast because we found this keen grinder from a combat supplier, and this thing increases mechanoid shredding speed by 75%. And how quickly you can do actually a lot of things related to androids is governed by mechanoid shredding speed. So yeah, we're cranking out these robots really quickly. We just made another one, Bradley, who, wow, this guy sucks. That's another candidate going in Rimdeed, and this guy's only going to sell for 338. He doesn't even have any health conditions either. Like, this dude just sucks. That's definitely not going to cover his building costs, I don't think. Because he has 20 plasteel, 75 steel, 8 components, and just the cost of plasteel is around 180 silver. The components are also extremely expensive, 32 bucks a pop. So 8 of them is going to be like, what, 250 silver? Yeah, we're definitely not making profit here. So we've had this smoke spew on our map for quite a while, and it's spewing smoke into our colony, which I think is preventing our solar generation generators from getting their maximum amount of power. It says they're getting 1471 watts still, which is quite a bit, but I think without this giant smoke cloud, we would be getting more. And so that being said, we sent Foley and the M7 over to this mech cluster smoke spewer, and we are using these swarm shells. Oh, and they actually sent in more mechs. But yeah, these swarm shells cost a couple components, um, I think some steel, and they're able to fire these micro scythers that actually did end up killing one of the scythers. It looks like they got destroyed pretty quickly after that. But yeah, we're gonna try to fire them onto this auto inferno turret and hopefully they'll be able to take it out. And Oh, it actually direct hit onto the turret, but they're attacking the scyther, unfortunately, not the turret. Come on, you idiots, attack this. No, they're dead. Unfortunately, they were launched right onto the Scyther, which is really good at melee, so it was able to dispatch of them pretty quickly. We have two more shots, though, and Foley is actually pretty accurate because he's got really good intellectual and shooting. Okay, well, that wasn't that accurate, but he did hit these Lancers, which is good. Micro Scythers are just tearing the Lancers up. It actually killed two Lancers off of that. The Scyther's actually dead too. And then they're going for the pikeman now. 
wonder if we don't even have to fight this, because we got one more shell ready to fire. Here comes the last shell. We did hit the auto mortar. Please say it didn't crash. Are we getting raided? What's going on here? Getting big lag spike. Man, okay, cool. We're not... I, mean, I think room thread might have crashed. Only one micro scyther there spawned, so there's definitely something going on there with like firing the shell onto scythers that are already dead. So I restarted and here's my debug log. It's not looking good. There's a lot of errors going out that have something to do with the micro scyther generator, which I'm guessing is the thing that we launched right on top of these dead micro scythers. And what I'm thinking is that they can't generate because there's already dead micro scythers there. And yeah, it is feeling a little bit choppy for rim threaded, but compared to like the normal game i don't even notice the lag and i think the reason why it should be lagging by the way i don't know why these guys are not charging us i don't know if that's something to do with the air that's going down if they're all becoming stupid because of the air because yeah they don't seem to be aware that we're down here okay maybe we just go in here and start mailing them like might as well right might as well not waste ammo. Okay, this Inferno turret seems to know what's up, but I don't think the Inferno turret can do any damage to our M7. It's actually to shoot it, so when it does explode, it's not gonna do explosion damage. Because the M7 is not immune to explosion damage, I don't think. Oh, wait, how did it just fire over the wall, by the way? Not fully. I don't know, whatever. It's not a big deal. We're gonna claim this, what I think is a weather controller. Oh, and there's actually a turret here. I didn't notice that. Oh, this turret's actually shooting at M7. Let's just pull M7 back. Or let's just have him destroy the turret, I guess. Yeah, I don't know what's up with these mechs, but it doesn't seem like they're hostile anymore. Uh, yeah, it's kind of hostile. Like, it's attacking our door. It's attacking M7 when he attacks it. But yeah, we'll destroy the smoke spewer once and for all. While we're in base, we're actually not getting any airs, which is good. Even when we're getting airs, though, I have noticed that performance really hasn't taken much of a hit. Like, it's almost unnoticeable, even when there's massive amounts of airs spamming. The only exception being the airs that actually break rim threaded. I've had a couple of those, but with a little troubleshooting, I've been able to fix them. What the hell is that? N4 conversion chamber. Is this related to void? Yeah, it is. It's a void thing. So that's an interesting sound file and yeah we're gonna actually bombard this thing with a mortar and we're really accurate because Foley has really high shooting and intellectual and with I think it's the mortar accuracy mod it takes both of those and it kind of averages them but since he has really high both okay I was expecting that to actually spawn a bunch of enemies we're sending out melee one bot and this guy really sucks so I don't really care if he dies Uh, what? I'm not really sure what happened just there. We're gonna do a little test here again. And okay, he's not like rapid fire attacking these insects. I don't really have any idea what that was all about, why he pretty much one shot the void spaceship thingy, but it was odd that it wasn't spawning any enemies. So we're getting sieged by robots, and what I'm hoping is that if we fire a mortar onto this infested ship module, and we did connect, very nice. I'm hoping these insects are going to charge at these raiders, which that looks like is exactly what's gonna happen. And these raiders are androids, and there are actually some higher tier ones as well. Um, there's some tier threes and tier fours in here. There's only a couple tier four androids. Most of them are remote control, but this guy Jason is not. Being that he's a tier four android, he has really boosted stats, and he's a brawler, which lowers his melee cooldown. I think this guy would be really good to use like pacifier on. We're about to use, okay, he joined us. He did get a burn on his brain, only one HP though. And yeah, you can see like he's moving really quickly and crap, he got hit pretty good in his voltage adapter. I'm just gonna run, I guess. And yeah, tier four androids are actually really quick. I know he got hit again a few times, but looks like he might be able to get out of there. He made it out. He's still moving so fast. So the issue now for Jason is that he's kind of between a rock and a hard place, you could say. Like up here, we got the raid, which like the raid should end soon, I think. But yeah, over here to the east, we got a bunch of insects that spawn from the crash ship. So they're all linked. Whenever you hit one crash ship, then the other ones spawn insects as well, if they have not been opened yet. And yeah, we had like three crash ship events back to back, which was a little bit odd. 
but yeah we're gonna just have jason run down here to the southeast and he is in a really bad mood by the way oh he's a brawler that has a ranged weapon we should just drop that and then pick it back up and we're getting chased by insects by the way we might just be able to do a little loop around him the only issue is that yeah he's in a bad mood well he's actually not in that bad of a mood i don't know if he has a mental breakdown that could be really bad we're just gonna have him try to outrun these insects though which you should be able to do hopefully i don't know this is getting a little bit scary they're kind of de-aggroing Oh, yeah, they're kind of de-aggroing. They don't really care too much if he gets too far away from them. And all right, so Melee 2 bot was out here in the middle of nowhere. Unconscious, I didn't really care too much about him. He did get kidnapped, but it looks like the rest of the androids are going to leave. And we're just going to grab all this stuff that they brought us. And yeah, like Melee 2 bot, he was not good. So that's why I did not care to even grab him in the first place. But yeah, there's a tier 4 android that got killed here. And a couple of tier 2s and some tier 1s. I'm wondering what happens if we butcher up the tier 4 though. Well, we're going to hopefully find out soon but before we do that we got a manhunting pack of dinotheriums immediately after that raid and this is going to be so much meat and leather and the tusks from each of these dinotheriums also sell for a bunch so we're going to have quite a bit of money to work with after this whole thing on top of the siege that just attacked us at the machining table we finally did get the research machine done there's a bill where you can disassemble dead android it's this one and yeah we got two components bit of plasteel i think 12 plasteel for the tier one but then this is a tier four and it gave us quite a bit more components and quite a bit more plasteel like 50 more plasteel you know we got a bunch of components from disassembling those androids which i mean that does nothing to cover the cost of a tier four android we actually have the ability to make them now we can make tier three and tier fours the problem with making tier four androids though is they take a persona core and without the mecha droids mod it's pretty much impossible to get these until you get space flight then you can do quests to go out and find them i do like that aspect of the mecha droids mod though where there's like an eight percent chance i believe to get a persona core each time you disassemble a dead mechanoid i think that's a really cool mechanic that should honestly be in the base game so we got wings butchering up all the dinotheriums and i'm not really sure what technobot's doing he's trying to haul but he can only carry like 30 leather because he's actually overburdened with wearing the marine armor that he's wearing we just got the m7 in here and yeah the thing's able to carry everything it's like here let me do it here let me do it so with the money we got from butchering up all those dinotheriums we're going to call in a bunch of exotic goods traders and try to get some good implants for jason who like i said is a brawler which lowers his melee cooldown he doesn't have any passions for melee and seven may not seem like that much but tier four androids get a huge boost to their stats like they learn a lot quicker their base movement speed is really high they have 50 percent built in armor and they do a good amount of dps like this is his dps unarmed which is really high if we give him some really good implants i think we can increase this by quite a bit and so yeah that's what we'll be doing in the next episode with that i want to thank you all for watching and i will see you in the next one